am going to speak to you today about some economic programs which the government proposes to follow. Some of them are new, others were set forth earlier but require to be pursued with greater vigor and determination. Please do not expect magic remedies and dramatic results. There is only one magic which can remove poverty and that is hard work sustained by clear vision, iron will and the strictest discipline. Each one of us in our place should determine to do more for our fellow citizens, not only for ourselves. There must be greater respect for state property. Its destruction will be visited by punitive fines. We also need to follow a far stricter code of austerity all around. Government has a duty to curb conspicuous consumption, but citizens also have a responsibility. That is the only way to better the life of the nation. The campaign of law-breaking, paralyzing national activity and inciting our security forces to indiscipline and disobedience would have led to economic chaos and collapse. And our country would have become vulnerable to fissiparous tendencies and external danger. With the fumes of hatred having cleared somewhat, we can see our economic goals with greater clarity and urgency. The emergency provides us a new opportunity to go ahead with our economic tasks. The first and foremost challenge is on the price front. In the last five days, the prices of many articles have shown a downward trend. This trend will have to be maintained. To this end, government will take a series of steps to stimulate production, speed up procurement and streamline the distribution of essential commodities. Stay orders have prevented procurement of paddy in West Bengal and Orissa. Our outlook in regard to foreign exchange resources is reasonably satisfactory. Therefore, where necessary, imports will be arranged so that supplies are sufficient. State governments have already been asked to advise dealers to display lists of prices and statements of stocks. Hoarders and those who violate the rules will be severely punished. This anti-inflation strategy has to be continued. Credit must be carefully regulated on a selective basis. Government departments and public enterprises have new orders to cut out inessential expenditure. The vast majority of our people live in the rural areas. We must implement sealing laws and distribute surplus land among the landless with redoubled zeal. We want the help of the local people in completing land records. Special care will be taken to ensure that tribal people are not deprived of their land. The program of providing house sites in rural areas will be vastly expanded. Laws will be introduced to confer ownership rights on landless laborers who have been in occupation of house sites of their landlords over a certain period. Resort to evictions will be sternly dealt with. The practice of bonded labor is barbarous and will be abolished. All contracts or other arrangements under which services of such bonded labor are now secured will be declared illegal. We propose to take action by stages to liquidate rural indebtedness. While new schemes will be drawn up to devise alternative agencies to provide institutional credit to landless laborers, rural artisans and small and marginal farmers who own less than two hectares there will be a moratorium on suits and execution of decrees for the recovery of debts from such groups. Debts from cooperatives, commercial banks and governments will be excluded from this scheme. Agricultural labor is among the worst exploited sections of our society. A review of the existing legislation on minimum wages for agricultural labor will be undertaken. 
and action will be initiated for suitable enhancement of minimum wages wherever necessary. We must go all out to increase production. Water and power hold the key to higher agricultural and industrial output. Steps are being taken to bring under irrigation at least 5 million more hectares of land. Proven underground water resources will be immediately harnessed and further surveys taken up for irrigation and for the provision of drinking water, especially in drought-prone areas. The power position has somewhat improved. Action is being taken to generate a further 2,600 megawatts. Adequate funds are being provided to implement power projects. For long-term needs, super-thermal stations under the central government are being planned. Straight electricity boards are being streamlined. The handloom industry is next only to agriculture in the number of people employed. Supplies of inputs will be insured to weavers at reasonable prices. A separate development commissioner for handlooms is being appointed. The policy of reservation for handloom is being rationalized to give greater protection to weavers. In the mill sector, the controlled cloth scheme is being improved so that dhotis, saris and cloth will be of better quality and are sold through a larger number of outlets in rural and urban areas. Fortunes have been made out of urban land at the nation's expense. Speculation in land and the concentration of urban property have led to glaring inequalities and to a great deal of haphazard urban growth. Legislation is being initiated to impose ceilings on the ownership and possession of vacant land, to acquire excess land, to restrict the plinth area of new dwelling units and to socialize urban and urbanizable land. Tax evasion is a crime. A great deal of black money so evaded goes into luxury housing. Urban property is grossly undervalued. Special squads will be set up forthwith to take up property valuation. Punishments will be stern. We are thinking of summary trials. Our campaign against smugglers will be intensified. It was thwarted by their release on technical points. In some cases, they even got anticipatory bail. The properties of smugglers will be confiscated whether held in their own name or Benami. Licensing procedures have come in the way of new investment, causing delay. These will be simplified. The investment limit of those industries which need no imports or governmental help will be raised. At the same time, I must point out that licenses are being misused. Import-export regulations are being amended. There will be speedy trials and penalties for breaking rules will include the confiscation of goods. Schemes for workers' participation in industries, particularly at the shop floor level and production programs, will be introduced. The movement of food grains, coal, steel and cement by railways has improved in the last few months. Constraints on the movement of goods by trucks will also be removed. For this purpose, we are introducing a system of national permits. People with fixed incomes have suffered severe hardships in the last few years. They need immediate relief. The minimum exemption limit for income tax will be raised from rupees 6,000 to 8,000. Students from poor families face special difficulties if they pursue higher studies away from their homes. To help them, essential commodities will be supplied at controlled prices to all hostels and approved lodging houses. Another important measure in the educational field will be to ensure that textbooks and stationery are available at reasonable prices to all school, college and university students. Prices will be strictly controlled and book banks established. As one of the measures to increase employment opportunities for educated young people, the Apprenticeship Act will be suitably amended so that managements in the organized sectors of our economy 
take a larger number of apprentices for a specified period. Special care will be taken to ensure a fair deal to the scheduled castes and tribes, minorities and handicapped persons in the recruitment of apprentices. I have only briefly outlined various parts of the new program which will be taken up in the coming weeks. Other matters are being looked into and further measures will be announced from time to time. I have no doubt that together they will make a difference to the country's economic outlook. What is most urgent is that collectively we should shake off any sense of helplessness. The worst feature of the crisis which was building over the last few months was that it spread cynicism and sapped national self-confidence. There is a chance now to regain the nation's spirit of adventure. Let us get on with the job. Jai Hind!